Okay, welcome everyone to today's session. Special guest today, Marco Moutinho. We already go way back. I think we met first time at the Self Publishers Mastermind in Cancun in 2018. Yes. Today, yes. five years ago. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's really. Been, uh, uh... Yeah, we've, we've. I think it was at a Mecca's um, event. Yeah, 2018. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The first one's 2018. The second one's 2019. Yeah. Yes. That, yeah. Yeah. We were both at both events, and I remember that uh, long before you also had the course, the Amazon I Ads did. Profit Formula. I was yes. one of your first uh, members. Yeah, a long time yes. ago. I remember this afternoon. I totally yeah. forgot about the course, but I still use all the tips, uh, tips and tricks, of course. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice, yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah, that was but in yeah. uh, that was in 2018. Yeah, when I released 2018. That. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I will give a short interruption. Mark Montigno is uh, yeah the founder of the Urban Writers, and we have a little bit the same background because we are both both originally software engineers. And mm -hmm. uh, I will always try to escape it, but Marco is going back to it. I already saw <laughs> it. And now he has got a really cool AI power tool, especially for self publishers. And uh, yeah, he approached me last week and I thought, wow, this, I was totally flabbergasted with the things I th saw. Of course, everyone, everyone knows ChatGPT and we, uh, and when you heard the first mid June, he, Jasper AI other tools, but I saw that one and thought, whoa, this is really going to help us self-publishers to increase our productivity because you don't have to switch between apps. It's all one integrated environment. So I thought, well, um, if I would do the demo, we would never totally get all the things because, yeah, Marco yeah. is the, is the, how do you say it? Um, creative brain behind the product <laughs> yeah well thank you you're too kind you're too kind yeah Juan. <laughs> so i thought well let's do a, a, a session live session and uh, for everyone who is watching us live do you have any questions or things you want to know up front or any um, things you're curious about if things can do otherwise we will just start and you can ask questions in the meeting chat after the uh, after Marco's done. I don't see anything dropping yet. I think, uh, Marco, we can just start. That you can share your awesome. screen. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to pull up the entire... Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see your screen. Okay, I'm just going to shift this. Okay, perfect. So this is uh, this is Dibley Create, and this is the dashboard that you see here. And essentially, what Dibley Create is kind of like a mix of Google Docs with Notion, um, and it's highly collaborative and completely integrated with AI. Now, may, for, may I ask yeah. one little question for the people who don't know what Notion is? Maybe you can give a short introduction on Notion. Sure. So Notion is similar to Google Docs, but it's 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 meant for teams and it allows you to really organize your documentation, your ideas, uh, everything very clearly all in one window. Um, it also does have some AI features in it. Um, so I would say it's like, imagine a organization of notepads and documentations and wikis for your internal organization notion is yeah. a great great tool for that uh, even for okay. personal use yeah 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 okay um, yeah so, yeah so this kind of combines a little bit of both and for those who's who have used or are familiar with notion you'll kind of see some areas where we've you know gotten some ideas uh from that application yeah um now, Dibley Create, um, I'm the, the founder of the Urban Writers, and, and what we're doing is we're actually rebranding the Urban Writers to Dibley, and this is going to happen in, it was supposed to happen next month, but there's a few delays, so right now our target is November, 
and so that's just a complete rebrand. And part of that rebrand is building tools under the Dibley umbrella, which Dibley Create is the first. Okay. And, yes. and yeah, so th this is why it's called Dibley Create and not like something to do with the urban writers. I just want yeah. to make, uh, make that clear. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to dive right into the project. So this is your dashboard. Um, you have, so token usage here, this is strictly for AI. So anytime you use our AI tools, uh, it costs tokens. Um, okay. And you get a limit every month that you can, that you can use. Uh, you have your projects, you have your folder structure here. You can list all your projects here, all your folders. Uh, we have a template system, which essentially once you use a template to start a new project, it'll have boilerplate setup, or depending on the template, it'll have like questions that you should consider for that type of content. Uh, you'll see that with like plot outline and nonfiction outline. There's a lot of questions yeah. in there that you should be answering. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Because our and audience... I think it's mainly nonfiction. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah, um, so, yeah, we have that nonfiction uh, version online, there. Yeah. yeah. Um, trash system, similar to anything else. Anything you delete goes here, and then it's gone after 30 days. We So, right now, I'm using dark mode, but we also have uh, light, light mode. mode. Yeah. If, if you maybe for the... For the video, maybe you can do the light mode or not. Light mode? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. For the demo. So... I'm going to actually, yeah, right here. So I started a project um, prior to this call just to get things set up because the tools are, are pretty in depth. So I just wanted to get the ball rolling quick to just demonstrate everything you can do. Um, but essentially in terms of uh, Dibley Create, uh, what you get when you start a project is you get a notes area here and then you get a sections area here. Uh, and what we do in the sections is when you're working on a book, uh, essentially sections is your chapters. So you have your chapters here. Um, and then yeah. notes is used for any supplemental material like research, brainstorming, requirements gathering, um, anything that you're going to use to build your book. We recommend that you put it in the notes. And the reason why we, we say that is because when you're ready to export your book, uh, mm -hmm. you have our export tool and it's going to format your book for you uh, ready to be published. And it doesn't include anything that's in notes. So whatever's in notes yeah. never gets put in here. Uh, this yeah. is version one of mm -hmm. our export slash format tool. This is going to be resemble closer to what you would find with Vellum or Atticus that'll exist here. We're working on version two right now yeah so now the file format i see is uh, docx so that's a word yeah. format and you can yes. also uh, do different do... sizes yep so we have yeah the paperback Ooh. sizes here that you yeah can change. five by eight to six by nine the most used ones yeah. are there yeah it's here a lot great yeah yeah and we're gonna have a style gallery too uh, right now it's just like basic like if i click ebook um mm -hmm. you'll see that this changes a little bit and it changes the settings here. Uh, but we're okay. going to get super in-depth with the styles, and you'll be able to create your own styles to reuse consistently across uh, your books. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. You so can that's create the styles for your brand, for example, and then apply to all your books. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you'll be able to save it and then apply it to all your future books if you want to keep the interior consistent across yeah. uh, your book content. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Um. Okay, so back to here. Um, this is like, a, in terms of collaboration, uh, you can, you know, hover over text, you can leave a comment and then uh, submit the comment. And then there's a comment section here and you'll see it's here and I can reply. Um, you can watch whoever you're collaborating with. Uh, if it's, you know, freelance around the urban writers or whoever, you can watch them literally type in real time. And as they're typing, it shows their name. Um, yeah. And so you can, you can have that real time feedback happening. We're going to be introducing real time chat as well as video and audio communication, write and create. So you can jump on Whoa. a call, jump on a video and discuss with whoever you're working or building the content with. Yeah. Um, and then, so, so editor features pretty much what you expect from every, every other editor. It has all the styling options here. Um, you have all the styling here. 
You can yeah. uh, drag your paragraphs around. You can have the styling here. You can insert uh, special characters, links, images, tables. We're going to be adding more here, but this is what you have access to right now. Yeah. Okay. And then more support the stuff is there already. Yeah. Yeah. And then the the biggest, I guess, or most um, advantageous part of this is the AI integration. And so Kip is our AI assistant. And Kip How did is... you come up with the name Kip? Just curiosity. Yeah. Um, so originally we wanted something that was like friendly and fun. And so we we're just thinking of like names that would suit well for like a robot. Like when you think yeah. of a robot character, um, yeah. so you can see like there's, there's a Kip uh, icons yeah. here and you see it's like a little robot. Uh, and, you know, we had a bunch of names and Kip was one of them and we had like a vote and then ultimately everybody just loved the way Kip sounded. Kip. And yeah. so we went with that. I know we, we tried to make it a, um, an acronym where it st stands for something. So K stands for yeah. something. I, we have a few, yeah. we have a few listed. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. but we haven't like yeah. made it official yet. So okay, yeah. I'm not going to say anything beyond that. No, but uh, let's keep it a secret for now. Yeah. About yeah. the fun fact, <laughs> do you know what Kip means in Dutch? I do not know. No. Yeah. I, I hope think. it's good. It's good. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. Well, depends if you're vegetarian, maybe it's not that good tasting but it means chicken 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 yeah interesting Kip, okay chicken yeah but yeah interesting. nothing to do yeah yeah interesting good to know so yeah, I, I had no idea no no but yes fun fact yeah but uh, yeah. please go on i'm uh, distracting you sorry for that yeah oh no that's fine that's fine um that, that was a great fact because I, I had no idea so no you can tell your team <laughs> yeah i'll let them know i'll let them know um okay so kip so kip is your ai assistant your writing assistant your content assistant your editing assistant whatever you need kip to help you with uh kip is there to essentially make your life easier now there's a few ways you can interact with kip um one way is i'm just gonna get rid of comment okay one way is to, for example, let's say you don't like the way this sounds. We can highlight the mm -hmm. text. You have a Kip icon here and you can ask Kip to um, rewrite. Yeah. Make this more engaging and fun. I mean, it's a, it's a disclaimer notice, so I don't know how good it's going to be, but. No, <laughs> <laughs> but we get the idea. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so as it generates, it's going to show you what it's removing, what it's the content it's replacing, uh, what it's keeping. And if you if you like it, after you read it, if you like it, uh, you can approve with the check mark. So it's just going to replace the existing content that's highlighted. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to keep the original, you can just copy and then do okay. with the content, whatever you want. You can ask Kip to retry again, or you can just cancel it entirely. So if I hit approve, you'll see that... Um, it changed. It's Welcome really to an exciting yeah. journey filled with knowledge and entertainment. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know if that's a good uh, for the copyright statement. Right? But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least it's more um, fun to read. It is. It is. It's not. It's not as boring now. Not as boring, exactly. The other thing you can do is ask Kip to. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I can actually just click this. It'll highlight the whole thing. Uh, grammar correct. And so if it finds like any issues, it's going to mm -hmm. do a sim similar system. It's going to show you if there's nothing wrong, it'll just say there's no changes needed. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's what we call our highlight kit. So highlight text, do something with it. Uh, we're working on a prompt library where you'll be able to have, you're going to have access to do more with your content, uh, okay. but that's coming out potentially within the next two weeks, actually. Um, oh, so, yeah. So let's look at another way to work with Kip. So yeah, for me, the, the, the note part and that the brainstorming is really interesting. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, so we have this slash command here, which allows uh, quick access to formatting. Uh, but Kip also exists here. So we can 
use Kip in line and then ask Kip to uh, ideas for an upcoming, I'm just gonna make something up, generate. And now Kip's gonna generate right in here, some ideas that you can leverage for your next book. Now this is like very generic because I was very mm -hmm. generic. Um, yeah. So you can be as specific. Prompt, of course, yeah. Yeah. And that's why we're creating a prompt library is just so we've devised all the prompts for you. And now you can just like one button click, enter, you know, a few details and you'll have um, really amazing output. Um, nice. So strategies for building confidence. Okay. So let's say we wanted to go with this. I'm just going to go into Kip. <coughs> Chapter ideas plus summary for book on. I'll just do it like like that. Now it's going to give us some chapter ideas for this. Oh, well, I messed that up. Sorry, guys. Should have not canceled no problem, it. No problem. Strategies for building confidence and boosting self esteem. <laughs> chapter ideas. Summary. Cool. So once it's done, mm -hmm. we'll just wait. I said, interesting. All right. So it's pretty fast, it. huh? It is pretty. F it is actually. It's surprisingly yeah. um, fast. I want to make yeah. this into a heading two. Okay. And we say chapter ideas, and this could be a heading three, uh, for example. And then you can keep going. Like Kip, Kip is here to generate and, and, and really help you refine your ideas. Um, and you keep working in this method of, okay, now I have some more ideas. Now I need this. Like maybe we need a target audience. Like who's your target audience for this book, right? And you can ask Kip to kind yeah. of help you hash out. Um, now, this is one way uh, to interact. Like, for example, I think things like what I would use this version for is things like write, write me an email template uh, to announce my new, I'll just say self-help, self-help book to my audience, for example. Yeah. Uh, and then generate, and then it's going to give you an email template that uh, you can use and you can go in, refine it, change what you want it to say. If you don't like the tone or the style, which you can specify uh, again, yeah. then you can just, you know, highlight and be like, Hey, make this like, make this more engaging uh, for the users yeah. to entice them to actually, you know, buy my book. Um, but here yeah. you go. So you have an email template. So, yeah, uh, that's faster than I type. <laughs> That's for um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's surprisingly fast. Like it, yeah. it's, yeah, it's pretty amazing. The things that you can do. Um, So the other version of Kip, so I've shown you two ways to interact with Kip. Uh, the third way, which are, there's four ways total, by the way. So the third way is uh, you have this chat, this icon here that opens a chat with Kip. And in okay, here sure. we can... Uh, what are we going to do here? So let's just go, hey, Kip, ideas for a self-help book. And then this is like more conversational. So this is what you're going to find, um, what you would expect from ChatGPT. You're going to get a similar exactly. experience yeah. here. Now, yeah. um, the cool so thing something... is that now you have it in the same tool, in the same browser window. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So we could start a new note, for example. And you know what's funny? Um, my team changed the UI. Like it was not like this half an hour ago. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. they did an update that I yeah, wasn't expecting. It's a uh, <laughs> uh, work in progress. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. Of course, you're okay. So let's say we like these ideas. You have a mm -hmm. similar system. So like you now can insert this right into the note and start working with it. You can try again or you can copy it and paste yeah. it wherever you want. Uh, so if we insert, you see you have your ideas here and we can just remove the the uh, conversational elements and then you can keep refining it. Awesome. Uh, how about ideas for a target? audience and now kip's gonna do uh the same thing give you some ideas and while kip does that i can do target audience and i'm just gonna h3 and then once kip's done i'll be able to insert it and then you can just keep having this like brainstorming session with kip on yeah. whatever you're working on Whatever yeah. you need so, help with, brainstorming yeah. ideas. Write, writers' blocks are absolutely. Passed, hopefully, thanks to Kip. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the cool thing is uh, you can start new conversations with Kip, which, so there's this icon here. So if we click it, so uh, I do want to apologize. This is a different UI than what I'm, I'm used to. This is literally just went live. So I just want to. Okay. Yeah, so everything's here. Okay, so you can click start new chat, and now I have a new chat. I can go, hey, Kip, yeah. right? And then it's going to, like, how can I assist you? And then I can go back um, to self-help book ideas. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. History. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So it'll keep track of all your conversations, and yeah. you can go back. Uh, Come back time. and, uh, yeah continue the conversation or just pull the results or whatever, whatever you need. It's all there for you um, to make your life easier. So that's chat Kip. I showed you uh, inline Kip, which is uh, it just generating right inside the editor and then highlight Kip. And now there's one more version, which is like my favorite. And this is Kip generate and Kip generate is just highly specialized tools that are very good at, very, at like a specific output. And so to access okay. Kip Generate, uh, you have a Kip icon right here. So if we click it, now you have access also to cool. yeah. the tools here. Um, so these are the first tools that we've launched with. We mm -hmm. have at least another 10 to 15 lined up that we're going to be working nice. on. And then cool. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more. Um, at that point, yeah. after that point. Yeah. But yeah, I think that you have... research is interesting. Yes. I think F, and we F, have... F, F thing is in interesting, but uh, the research for me is quite a thing. Yeah. We have, uh, I haven't shown you version two that we're going to come out with. So an updated mm -hmm. version of, of this that I think is like really, really good, but I will show you an output result so that you can kind of gauge what to expect uh, when it comes yeah, out. Yeah. Um, so I went ahead and I, I I did this whole campaign of like, I just picked a topic and now I, I did the research and I gathered a bunch of data and I used it to pass into the outline to create an outline for me. I ended up using the outline to create a description. So I've done all this. I'm going to walk you through it all um, nice. right now. Okay. So, Every tool has this history icon that looks like a clock. And when you okay. click on it, you have access to all the generations, um, everything that you've generated with that tool, even things that have failed, like this one failed, for example, but I can go back and pull what I input into it so I can try again, for example. Okay, yeah. Um, so I'm going to, so every tool has that. So if we go here, you can see that you have yeah. all the tools here. Uh, yeah. Summary, same thing. Okay. So what I'm going to do is kind of showcase the results. Okay. And then if anybody has suggestions on how they want me to test each tool, uh, we can we can do that and have it running in the background while I'm showcasing um the other results because these tools they they can take some time and so we've built them where you don't have to wait for it it'll, it'll just run in the background um i'm actually gonna pull uh let me pull a video to show you does anybody have 
So if anyone has any ideas or questions or interest or curiosity in certain things, you can put that in the chat. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see outline, description, research, summarize, and title yeah. generator. Because for me, the title generator was also uh, really funny because if I remember correctly, you connect to Amazon and then you pull actual book titles for Amazon and that you yes. use as an input for your title generator, right? Yes. And I'll showcase that. Now, title generator, yeah. we did find a flaw. And we're working on fixing it in version two. And we are at, we already we've already built it. Now it's just like integrating it into here. But the problem okay. is so what this does is you select your category and it's gonna look at the top either 20 or 30 best sellers in the category. And then it's gonna give you like keyword data, uh, what those topics are about, and then like title suggestions. Now, the problem is because we're only showing top level categories, um, sometimes you get books that don't really make that much sense in that category because they're so it's okay. so top level that uh, the variation between books isn't it's like home enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we're 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 working on bring going four levels deep. Um, yeah, okay. into the categories, but as well as allowing you to enter a search term here. So it's even like more hyper, hyper focused on, on your cool. niche. So cool. that's coming out soon, but I'll, I'll show yeah, you um, results. Uh, we do have some questions, Marco, which I can cover if you, uh, yeah. and then you can show the results. Yes, Yeah. absolutely. So the first yes, question please. is from Robbie. Seems that Amazon was trying to limit the number of AI books generated. What's your point of view? So I will give my point of view first, and maybe Marco wants to add something or not, doesn't matter. But my point of view is, yeah, Amazon has updated their guidelines, and I saw a screenshot from someone in the Facebook group who, uh, that the maximum number of uploaded books was reached. So, um, yeah, Amazon is clearly doing something uh, against the, yeah, the uh, tsunami of AI-generated books created. So my opinion, mm -hmm. if you want to stand out in the age of AI, I think you have to go back one step back and focus on quality. And um, yeah, I what I will do now is to only use tools like this, like DB Create, and I think DB Create is the best tool I saw until now, is to use um, AI to assist me in the writing process, like Marco demonstrated. I demonstrated the ID generator, um, the chat function, um, all the all those things. So I'm going to focus more on ID generation. Then I'm going to write myself, and then I will use um, Jet of Double Create Kip mm -hmm. to correct what I've written to improve my writing. So I'm not going to exactly generate everything um, from scratch like many people do. But that's just my opinion. And um, yeah, I, I don't think there's any other option. Huh? You can generate tons of books, but at the end you're going to against the limit on what you can yeah. upload. And Amazon doesn't like it, so uh, they will punish you probably. So that's my yeah. opinion. What's your vision yeah. on it? My, uh, I have a very similar one. So, so the way I see AI is an assistant. It's a tool that you leverage like every other tool that exists. It's just a really, really good tool. It's absolutely yeah. amazing what it can do. And I think everybody should be using it, uh, but use it as your assistant. I don't think you should be leveraging AI for complete content generation. Uh, no, first I of agree. all, it's, it's kind of, it's easy. It's not that hard to tell uh, when something is AI generated. If you like really pay close attention you can see patterns but anyways you you have to have that emotion in the writing to really capture the audience's attention which ai is not very good at at least for no. right now yeah and the way we've built create is kip is your assistant right everything that i showed you so far has to do with like brainstorming idea generation exactly. uh, helping you fix your content but we're not necessarily generating it completely. And now this doesn't prevent you from doing it, 
No. But uh, you do have that option. You can do that here, right? You have complete yeah. freedom. But um, I do think that the future is AI assisted, not AI generated entirely. And exactly. I think yeah. that's that's essentially what Amazon's doing. So Amazon yeah. is now getting you to, you know, hey, did your was your content AI generated? And they don't care about AI assisted because it makes sense. Like. Uh, we were Juan and I were talking about this prior to this call, and I mentioned like if you think about yeah. an editor coming in and revising and helping you clean up your content, they're assisting you, but you don't have to go and say now that the editor wrote the book or whatever. Like it just it's it that's just not how it works, and that's no. that's that AI assisted portion. Your AI is helping you refine your content and get and that message out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. It, it, with but, all the regulations and what's happening, uh, Amazon, mm -hmm. I think um, Amazon really had no choice to do this, but I'm sure based off the amount of content they're getting uploaded, like that's AI generated, this was inevitable. Inevitable, uh, yeah. 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 But we also have another question from Natalia, who is interested in how to write a chapter with this tool. What are the steps? And I think you also prepared that part or not? If you can show how to write a chapter with yeah. the, of your book. Oh, sorry. So, so do, is it like to generate a chapter or to just yeah, so, physically yeah. start typing? No, to to, I think what Natalia is curious about how to generate a uh, chapter. So then you have to, when you upload the book, you have to choose, uh, I used AI to generate content when you upload it, but that part. Right. That's also possible and how it works. Okay. So if you wanted Kip to write a chapter for you, for example, yeah. um, you could start your new chapter and you could use Kip like this. Now, I want to be clear that we're, we're working on a prompt library that's going to make this so much easier. And you just have like a list of options of what you want Kip to write and it'll generate generate it for you. Uh, so right now, okay. the way it works is you would have to prompt it yourself, right? Yeah. So think about like, okay, here, let me go. Maybe the, the self-help of, uh, yeah. Clean eating. Let's take clean this chapter. Eating, for example, yeah. Introduction to clean eating, highlight its importance and benefits. Okay, let me copy this. I'm going to go back to chapter one. Kip, right. I'm going to paste this introduction. What just happened? I Sorry. think you uh, didn't. I think I clicked outside. Happened. Yeah, you clicked yeah. outside. You didn't That's... click on generate. So introduce clean eating. Should should be clean highlighting its pores. Okay. Yeah, let's try this. That's why you can generate chat. That's all it wrote. It's so all it's wrote, but, but the reason you, why this is all it's yeah. wrote is because of the prompt. Like I would have to define a high level prompt to get you to write clean content. And we have those. We actually have uh, when we release the prompt library, there's going to be over 30 prompts ready for you to go. And we're going to keep adding more and we're actually going to yeah. make it community driven. So you can add your own prompts, share it with other people. Um, and, and what happens, is, I'm just going to prove this. What happens is when you go to Kip here, um, it's too bad. I can't show you the UI, but under brainstorm, there's going to be prompt library. You'll mm -hmm. go over it. And then once you go over it, there's going to be a list of categories, right? So for, okay. uh, book writing, world building, character building, uh, uh, target audience, like so many things, right? Write me this, write me that. So we have a bunch and you'll just be able to click and give some details. Like you could just pass in what I passed in here into that yeah. input. And then it's going to generate a whole bunch of content for you. Yeah. Um, so that's coming right now. You can do that. But for me to do that, I would have to refine this a lot further. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, so, uh, right. Uh, a chapter on, Let's see if this helps, but I'm not a prompt expert. So I have a team oh. that helps me with this. 
uh, introduce clean eating. Um, not a chapter, write a, I would have to bullet list it and then it would probably do a better job to be honest. Okay. But I'm just curious to see what it does here. So you can see you can get a little bit more content. Um, yeah. And again, Maybe. it's it's about refining the prompt to yeah, get. And in the beginning, you have the for. ideas. And the maybe there with ideas, you can say, uh, write me a prompt based on these yeah. ideas. And then you get the exactly. prompt. And then you put in the prompt there. And then you have the chapter. Yeah, no exactly. Problem. Yeah, exactly. But what we're doing is we're get, we want to get rid of you thinking about how to build the prompt. And it's just available for you. And then you do wow, whatever you want yeah. with it. Yeah. 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 So that's it's, coming. Uh, hopefully in the next two weeks, you'll see a prompt library uh, yeah. feature. Oh, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, so that's writing chapters. Robbie, yeah. yeah. Robbie and Natalia, did we answer your questions? Maybe you can answer them in the chat. If Or do you have other questions? Follow-up questions? <laughs> No, I, I think we answered the questions. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. Cool. All right. So let me walk you through. Cool. Thanks a lot. Yeah. We uh, answered it. The, the tools here. Um, does anybody, you know what? I'll just show you the results. Okay. So yeah. I did a little bit of research. Let's start with research. So summarizer. So summarizer essentially takes in content. Okay. Whether mm -hmm. it's a file, whether it's content right from create or whether it's a video. So you got files, so you can come drag in a, a file. I think it supports at max 60,000 words. Okay. I'm pretty wow. sure. So you can upload the whole book and yeah. that summarizes for you. Yeah. Um, the, the that's the file then the sections is you could just pick it so if you're working in create and you want to use this you have the option of just picking it from there or a video right now we just support youtube videos um but essentially cool. whatever format you use what it does is it's going to consume that content and then give you a summary overview of what that content's about and key takeaways uh from that content uh, yeah. additionally you can ask so for blog post ideas and tweet ideas, and we're adding a lot more options here for you. So does anybody, do you have like a link I can use to showcase? Um, at the moment, you, not, but I can. Uh, we can search for it. Oh. Yeah, I can go to YouTube. And do Alex Omoshi video, they're really popular, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, perfect. If you paste it in, how long does chat. it take you think? This is pretty quick. This this particular tool is pretty fast, maybe yeah. 20, 30 seconds, maybe. Okay. But I'll show you the minimize function so that you don't you don't have to stay here and we can continue moving on to another tool yeah. and come back. I um, I will paste it in the chat. Yeah. If I can see my chat. <laughs> Where's my chat? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Nice. So, so while you're doing that, I can answer Robbie's second question. Anyway, we will need to flag this content as AI generated or AI assistant. Isn't it? Well, depends. Rory, how are you going to use it? If you're only going to use it to generate ideas and then write the text yourself, and then use AI to correct it and improve it, then it's AI assisted and you don't have to indicate AI assisted. You only have to um, indicate AI generated when the first version of the text is generated by an AI tool. So in the demo um, Marco gave for for uh, Natalia, in that case, when you generate the first version of a chapter by KIP, by the AI tool, 
then you have to indicate when you're uploading a book, uh, parts of the book or the whole book is generated by AI. But if you use AI only as, um, yeah, to help you be creative, to give you ideas, to help you give structure, and then later to, uh, yeah, to improve the written text, to make it more uh, easier to read or more professional, et cetera, et cetera, all prompts you can give in, then you don't even have to say it's AI assisted because AI assisted, what Marco um, shared with us is like, yeah, the current books, which are edited by an editor, and very few books actually include the name of the editor. That's just part of the process. And the writer doesn't have to say, uh, I used um, this and this person as my editor. So, and the same is with AI. If you use AI just to improve the quality, and um, you only use it as an assistant, then you don't have to indicate it. So I hope that um, that it uh, helps, but that is more clear. Joshua has, has to leave. Well, thank you very, very much for checking out our thing. And um, he was going to ask about any tools or systems in place to check a currency of content since yet. GPT has a tendency to create false or misleading information. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should repeat the question a little bit more slowly. So what Joshua wants to know yeah. is to, um, yeah, if there are systems in place to check the accuracy of the generated content. Yeah. So this is actually a very big problem um, in the AI uh, model space in general. It doesn't matter general. which which model you use, whether you're using ChatGPT, BARD, uh, or any of the open source uh, models, this is a big problem where mm. um, where it'll hallucinate facts <laughs> yeah. that aren't real. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so at the moment, there is no guarantee way. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of the tools that we use, we, we try to get it to use research backed data in here um, so that it's only using things that we're pulling that are actually ex that exist online and not make yeah. things up. So, uh, but this is like a, this is an everybody problem. So this is something that you have to pay attention to with AI, no matter yeah. what. And that's why having an expert in whatever you're working on, having someone review the content, Having an overview by an expert in the subject is always recommended. Do not okay. ever just completely trust AI. No, and what no. it tells you. Yeah, like yeah. You, yeah, yeah. So you have to do some fact checking yourself. At the moment, there's yeah. no really a way around it. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's just uh, the state of the market as it is. Yeah. 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 And now you. I don't think there are any ways to fact check things, right? In the future. Uh, there are certain, there are ways that we can build in fact checkers where we're taking that content and now we're, we're having an automated system go and search the internet for you to make sure that's true. Mm -hmm. So yes, there are things that we can build in, but it's not built. It's, it's, it's not directly from these AI models. It's something that we build on top of it, that when the yeah. AI returns a result, now we run a fact checker to make sure that yeah. that content um, and that's definitely something we're, we're considering. Uh, it, mm -hmm. it, it is a little bit more effort and a lot of work and it would yeah. consume more time. Right. So like, for example, we generated all this. Now this, we don't have to fact check because we're just pulling it from a YouTube video. From YouTube. Yeah. But uh, for other things where it's just AI generating from its own database of knowledge, uh, then you would have to, you couldn't just accept it. Now you'd have to run it through a fact checker. So there's that time uh time delay yeah consideration as well yeah, yeah we so, can make it optional the fact check exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh um, but cool you're already prepared yeah. for everything yeah yeah there's a <laughs> there's a we've yeah. thought about a lot that's for yeah. sure um, and i see i didn't even notice how fast he created this yeah so this was pretty oh, quick uh, yeah so this is the the video that you sent me, you you sent me the search results, but I went and I pulled the video. Okay, um, cool. And, and then this is the the summary here. The key takeaways from that video uh, is right here for anybody who's watched it. Uh, you can let me know if this is true or not, uh, but it, it seems to be pretty accurate. 
Uh, yeah. And then you can see we have blog post ideas and tweet post ideas uh, that it gave you uh, so, based off of this. Yeah. How does that work? Because it looks like it generated the text way faster than, than watching the whole video, right? Yeah. So um, YouTube has this, we tap into YouTube's transcription. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 text transcription. So we we use that. Now there's videos. Most videos have this. Now there mm -hmm. are videos that don't, and we're connecting it to um, a separate AI model that can transcribe the whole video for you. And then uh, now you can do all these analysis on it. Wow. Um, and we're going to be adding that and not necessarily for YouTube, but where this benefits is like, let's say you have your own video uh, content, like either like podcasts or like yeah. um, like internal, like what anything that's not on YouTube, yeah. for example, you'd be yeah. able to pass it in and get and create other the content. From it. Yeah. yeah. So let's say you wanted like, here's an hour and a half podcast that I created. I want 10 blog posts from this. And you put it in and now it's going to create 10 blog posts with your own voice because it's your content is not generating. Yeah. It, it might like to, to, to combine things and make it make sense. It might have to generate some a little bit, but yeah. for the most part, it's going to use your content, whatever you said, yeah. whatever your, you wrote. Your own words. Yeah. Your yeah. way of, of explaining your way of speaking. Yeah, exactly. Nice. And, yeah. and we're gonna, we're going to be doing that not just for blog posts, but like social media posts for all kinds, uh, advertisements, whatever, any other type of form of content, you'll be able to extract it from existing content that you have now. Cool. Um, that's a big focus that we have. And um, I have uh, an engineer dedicated to working on that. And I'm hoping by next month that it should be available. Uh, but yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Always be careful when you say some timelines in software development. That's my right. experience, Marco. You yeah. know, I also know it. Because yes. the, the developers timelines says, are well, tricky. It's, it has to be ready in two weeks. But yeah. then it's for 99% ready, but the last percent takes two more weeks. We exactly. Know that. Yeah. Yeah. But really, got... and Natalia also confirms really impressive this uh, functionality. It Thank can you. really save us a lot of time. Yeah. Yes. And I'll show you. Uh, so prior to this call, I, I uh, so if I go here, um, I did a bunch of, uh, so you can rename this and you can name it whatever you want. We're going to have Kip kind of help you with the naming soon, but right now it just, it just has your, whatever you pass in. Yeah. Um, just the, the copy paste. The but if we go well, here, like I did some research on clean eating. So I went to YouTube. And uh, I, I didn't have to add this. It was more for research, but I did it anyways to showcase the blog post and tweet ideas. Um, mm -hmm. But I was doing some clean eating research uh, and I pulled a couple of videos and I can show you here, like if I go here, uh, you can see um, the, the content that I pulled from videos. And then I use this to generate an outline, ideas for an outline. Um, now, the so that's the video the research tool i actually ran something here uh what did i type I what did forget. you type <laughs> usually it shows let me see if i go back here sorry my siri just my Siri just kicked in. Um, so I, I wrote keto diet. That's what it was. So let me go. Actually, wait, what am I doing? I'm going to save this to a note. Uh, right, no, because I, I'm not showcasing this one. I have I have other research that I did. Uh, so yeah, so I put research. So I put keto diet. And what it's doing is I think I picked 15 books, the max. And what it's doing is it's going into Amazon pulling the 15 books from that search term. It's going to give you like the sales data that you would expect from other tools, but as well as it's going to the customer reviews and it's giving you um, a summary of what people are saying, the good, the bad, 
And that way you have an overview of your competitors and what your competitors are doing. Uh, and or sorry, how the customers feel about your competitors and where you can get like a key advantage uh, based off the feedback. Now, we have a version two of this that is like a lot more in depth. So for this version, for example, we're taking uh, 50 reviews per book. And I, like I said, I think this goes down to 15 books. Um, yeah, book 15. Yeah, we're taking so this, 50 reviews per book in this one. Yeah, I, I lost my connection a little bit, but this is the part where you get the reviews from the books, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Now, That's really, really powerful for customer research, this. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to show you a new version. Now, this mm -hmm. version goes deep into a single book. But we're gonna we're now now that we found that we're creating amazing results, we're actually gonna reply reapply this new algorithm to this mm -hmm. this version where you're where you're searching multiple books. So I'm gonna show you one that I did for the clean diet. I'm just gonna okay. Uh, actually, I'll just close this, and I think it's the analysis. Okay, so this is the book, the complete clean eating cookbook, um, and we collected 500 reviews here 500, 500 wow. customer reviews and we pulled uh, all the strengths weaknesses. all the strengths yeah wow. so what they people took, love that took me what, hours yeah what people dislike from here now we yeah. go deeper so I'll, i'm going to show you i'm going to keep scrolling this is about 1500 words um so we have writing style and language so how people feel about reading the book and the style it's written. Um, so you're getting knowledge on that, on, on the, that customer experience of actually going yeah. through the book, uh, the themes that are being handled in the book. Um, so you, you can see here from a reader's perspective, how they feel the book was handled in terms of like what was expressed inside. You have yeah. how it emotionally impacted the readers, the suggestions. So, if customers were like, Hey, I wish this book had this, it's going to come under here. So you can see, uh, and then overall topic and themes that were discussed. Uh, and this is based off the reviews. So you'll have some good, some bad, like practical and easy to follow recipes. And then you'll have like quality of production pages falling out. So you'll have the good and the bad here. And we're reworking the keyword analysis. Uh, we actually want it to be yeah. more, uh, search term based, not just like single words. So we're reworking this, but you can kind of see the the Idea. most used words that yeah. customers in are the, expressing Yeah, in the reviews. In and the then reviews. the last part is a competitive edge. So it's giving you an overview of how to stand out wow. when you're writing your own book. Yeah. Um, so you can see incorporate more photos. So it'll give you a little detail, comprehensive nutritional information, enhanced binding quality, expansion of recipe options for specific dietary restrictions, uh, simplified and beginner friendly recipes. So you can see, okay, like I have some ways that now I can stand out and create a better experience for my audience. Wow. This is uh, also the people, uh, who joined us are also really uh, amazed by this feature, Marco. Yeah, and I also, yeah. So Very this good. positive feedback here. Amazing, I love that. Yeah, this is not out yet. This is going to be out. We've actually built it. That's why I was able to demo it because uh, we use a separate um, environment to test anytime we work on something new. Uh, so this okay. is built. Now it's just mm -hmm. integrating into the live production. In the live version, yeah, production part. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And so essentially it'll be in research. It'll be in here. You'll have an option here of in-depth analysis and you'll have to pass in an ASIN or an ISBN. Which okay. doesn't matter which so one. So both work. Wow. Yeah. yeah, both will work. And then it'll just analyze it and you'll get the output I just showed you. Uh, wow. Wow. Yeah. And then we're going to apply the same algorithm to version two. Sorry, let me go back to here. So this, so we're going to apply the same algorithm, the same analysis 
to this, but now across 15 books at once. The only difference is we're only collecting 50 reviews per book uh, mm -hmm. versus when you're going on an in-depth analysis, we're collecting up to 500 reviews. So that's the difference there. Oh. But this yeah. is going to give you enough insights across up to 15 books in, in your search term, for example. In your search term, yeah. Or in your category. Yeah, because you can, you can yeah. do category as well. Uh, oh. yeah. yeah. So that's research, which I'm, yeah. I'm very excited about. Uh, yeah. yeah. When you showed me that last week, yeah. I was, well, I need to share this with my audience because <laughs> or maybe I'm the only one who likes it, but no, I already see it. Uh, people are really uh, excited. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, so there's two more. So I think I showed, did I show a title generator? I think I did. Yeah, we, I think we went over uh, why the main categories is not enough. We have to go deeper, and that's coming out soon. Um, but the one, so list of potential titles uh, here. But again, like yeah. we're we're at a main, sorry, did I show this? I, I'm no, actually confused. No. I feel like I did. No? No, we talked about it, but we, I think you didn't. We talked, I think, about yeah, I think before right. the call, not during the call. Not during the call. Okay, I think you are right. So let me show you the title generator. I'm just going to run it on computers and text. So this is going to vary so much. So I'll show you what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to hit search. So I'm going to let it do its thing. Oh, by the way, like when anything's running, when you minimize, it shows it here that it's running. When it's done, okay. you get a check mark. And then you can click it and you can see the results. And you can have multiple tools running. I think we we limit it to three running at a time, but yeah, uh, <clears throat> yeah. I I really want to show the outline because this is one of my favorite uh, tools. So, outline self explanatory. It will build a highly in depth outline for you based off the information you pass in, and we support both fiction non fiction, and we use two different strategies for it. Um, so you can choose your audience here. Uh, you can enter how many chapters you want the book to be. Uh, right now, we only support up to 20. And then number of words for that book, we only support up to 100,000. Okay. Uh, yeah. You can you enter your book title. Now, we're going to change this to be optional because some people coming in here, they don't have an idea for the title yet. So we're okay. going gonna to change that. But you enter your genre, uh, the topic, the main topic that's discussed. And then in this section, explanation of the book, essentially as much detail or as little mm -hmm. detail as you want. Um, okay. So yeah. I have a, already a bunch that I generated. So I'm going to go to my list. So I did one for clean eating. Um, mm -hmm. This forgiveness one, I think it's a faith-based one. We have like a romance fiction. Um, and I'll just, I'll quickly run. What I'll do is I'll run through a fiction and a nonfiction version, just so you have an idea. So let's do yeah, clean eating. True. So what I passed into clean eating, I was a little bit more specific and I had Kip help me with ideas mm. or sorry. No, no. Kip didn't help me with this one. This one was actually pulled from the analysis, right? I have it here. Actually, okay. I wrote it. Outline details. Yeah. So this is what I passed in. Topics and themes, how this book stands out uh, here. And then some details here, the title of the book here. So this is what I passed in. So if we go back... Um, yeah, I have this saved. I don't need to save it again, but I'll save it for demo. So once this is done, what you can do is you can save it as a note and then we'll just call it clean eating outline and then save it. And now we're going to have a clean eating outline here. So this is the nonfiction version and I'm going to quickly walk you through it. So you have your requirements, you have the three objectives of the book here. You have a brief description of what the book is about the key reader takeaway. So what the reader is going to get out of it uh, when yeah. you read the book, questions that you need to be answering within the book, who your audience is, why your audience is going to read it, other top books in the niche, uh, style of how it should be written. Uh, then mm -hmm. you have your competition analysis. So you have um, unique selling points of other books. So this is actually not formatted properly, but I fixed it. Let me just go here. And scroll down. So I fixed it. So these should be headings. So you have your unique selling points of other books. So what other books offer here. And then how your book can differentiate here. 
So you have that in the outline. Yeah. And then it jumps into uh, summaries, summary overview of every chapter. Yeah. It's all generated. All generated. Yeah. With the, For you. yeah. And what I passed into the details section is uh, this topics and themes and how this book stands out. Yeah. And that I collected from the analysis. Yeah. Also, and again, I spent 20 minutes tops doing this. If you continue to refine and you go deeper into like the analysis, into the videos that I pulled and collect more information to pass in, it's going to be a, a much better output. Yeah. More to details. Match, yeah. To match what you're going for. Um, but if we go back, uh, you'll see that you have, I think this is a 15 chapter book, maybe. Maybe I went all the way to 20. <laughs> yeah. 20. Yeah. So. I went all in here. Yeah. Yeah. Went all in. Uh, so, yeah, you can see that it, it kind of follows what yeah. I, what my guide was. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, yeah, so it generated cool. 7,200 words. I think it took like three to four minutes to get this done through that tool. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's faster than if you do it manually. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. And then, and, and then, you, like, if, you can keep refining this, uh, right? If you don't like the output, refine your input, get a different result. Uh, and because it's so quick, you keep iterating, and then you can literally either give this to to a writer, or yeah. you just hash this out and make it part of whatever outline you've already started, because this can give yeah. you a ton of ideas. So it could either yeah. be your idea machine. Or you could just use it as is, entirely up to you. Um, yeah. And, and then to back, be clear, if you, if you give this to a writer and the writer writes it itself, it's AI assisted and you don't have to inform Amazon. You don't have Technically, to say this wouldn't, this doesn't even qualify as AI assisted, I don't think, because it, no. unless the writer is using AI to no, but but write it, the content. Yeah, then you have to do AI generated, but AI assisted, you will never have to uh, inform Amazon about it. No. Right. Yeah. So this is so. I guess this top. is like borderline, but yeah, this is more like the yeah. research phase. Um, yeah. So you can use Kip for this. I still exactly. have a, a non, be fine. non AI book on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I will show you quickly a nonfiction version i have this one here death from above it's like an alien invasion uh and i was very vague like this is literally all i said uh, <laughs> alien invasion yeah. puts the world into darkness the alien race is creepy looking almost robot mixed with organic and then uh oh, yeah yeah for so super see. basic <laughs> yeah uh so uh alien invasion outline and then save and now, um, so you'll see it's going to be very different from uh, nonfiction. A nonfiction. Yeah. So you got the plot, subplots, your premise, your audience, how it should be written, the different characters, locations wow. of the story taking place, of where the story takes place, your trope categories, atmosphere and mood, how the book ends. Uh, okay. And then you get very descriptive of each location. So here there's only two. So you have a description in detail of what that location is like. <laughs> um, and then you get character descriptions of every character and it goes into vivid detail wow. of who they are. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And there's five of them. So this is a lot of content. So I'm just going to keep scrolling. So a lot of content. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. And then it goes into the chapter descriptions and it's giving you the, the flow of the story and what's happening in every chapter and which characters are in that chapter. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think and this goes... You, to... and so in this, and if you take this, um, how can you now generate a fiction book? You take this, and what would be the next step to generate this fiction book, 100% generated by AI? So, you know, it's such a great question because we actually could build that where it's here and you have, yeah. uh, prob I don't know, we can call it writer, for example. Yeah, writer. And yeah. You would, 
you would be able to pass in the entire outline and have Kip literally write the whole thing for you. Yeah. Uh, um, but we're not. That's maybe a little bit costly in um, AI uh, points. It definitely, right? it definitely would. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be a lot of tokens for sure. Tokens. Um, yeah. Because you'd be like, you'd be writing yeah. 60. In that case, it was a 60,000 word book. So it'd, it'd be a lot. Uh, yeah. But we we're not focused that much on the complete generation yet that may no. come uh afterwards uh we still feel like even if you do that you're not going to grasp that mo emotional um exactly. connection with the reader with the reader uh, yeah it's going to be harder to captivate them and get them to really feel the emotions of the characters and 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 the way it's written now we're going to be testing it for sure. But for the time being, the only way to do that in here would be to, uh, no, we, yeah, how generation. I showed you with the chapter, like yeah, exactly chapter by chapter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you take, um, sorry. Yeah. I just take... just, uh, was just a wild guess. My fantasy went wrong. I, it's not really important. So yeah, my fantasy <laughs> went, uh, a little bit uh, and no that's a great i mean that's a yeah. that's a viable question like hey can we can, can we now generate each chapter yeah. based off this and absolutely you can it's just a little bit more manual it's not like yeah. the other tools and, where you just pass in a prompt and you would have to say to kdp it's ai generated and then yeah. probably will show up in the future this is a book generated by ai so it would have less sales um, yeah. but it was just a wild idea yeah yeah, no, and I think it's a, a very valid one. I think I think yeah. pe people can definitely do that. We just don't have one tool where you could just be like, hey, write me this no. book, and then it just does yeah. it. So we don't have that yeah. uh, right now. Um, yeah. Now I get a question from Natalia. How much does it cost to write a 10K word book? You mentioned the cost of AI tokens. Yeah. Maybe, so, uh, maybe we can wrap it up, and then we can maybe go to the... To the pricing. Yes. Are there any okay. other questions about this tool? Yeah. I think... then we can, because I think you showed every functionality, right? Yeah. Other than the title generator. Um, so just quickly, I'll go over this. So if you look, I did computers and technology. You'll see that it has like a wide range of books. And that's why this is not 100% ready yet. And so yeah. once we have that level four system where you're going computer and technology, and then there's probably like programming and maybe it might have like different languages. I'm not sure, but yeah. then you can get like very specific, specific uh, and, then, and uh, correlated. And then uh, you'll get keywords. exactly, yeah. exactly. And then you'll have the search. So you'll be able to just type in your keyword too and get that information. So nice. it's going to be yeah. very valuable then. Uh, but right yeah. now it's still too generic, uh, yeah. but that's the tool. That's the tool. That's, this is what you would yeah. get. Work in progress. Yeah. Will be released soon. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. don't see any other questions popping up. So, um, yeah, I think it's already live, the tool. And uh, now we have, uh, yeah, maybe you can share with us sure. um, how the main question that everyone wants to know how much does it cost? Yes. $10,000, $20,000, $100,000. How much does it cost for us? So uh, there's two versions. So we have the free version. The free version does not come with all these uh, KIP tools, uh, but you'll be able to come in, write, work on projects here, and you'll have a limited access to chat KIP. Uh, okay. The pro version is everything I showed you. You'll have full access and you get a million tokens of usage per month. Now, mm -hmm. when it comes to million token tokens. usage. Wow. Yeah, Million and how much is it per month? Uh, it's twenty-three dollars a month. Twenty-three, just twenty-three dollars a month. Yeah. Now this is an early access price. Uh, it will be going up um, as soon as we refined a lot of the things that I've showed you. Plus, we have like the prompt library coming out. We have image generation. Uh, we have our article outliner. We have a bunch of tools coming out. Mm -hmm. Once those are released. Uh, the prices will go up. It could be as early as um, like early October. 
And so, but if you subscribe now, you will, we won't, you won't get the price increase. So this is an early access pricing. Um, early access pricing, uh, lifetime pricing. Yeah, lifetime. As long as you stay subscribed, what yeah. you, the 23, that's, it, it won't go up. You won't. Yeah, you won't so if, if you are fast and you go in time, you can lock in the $23 per month lifetime for 10 years. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or you can opt in for the, we have an annual where you save uh, two months. Two months. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then a million tokens. I will explain what that gets you. So a million tokens. So let's say that you don't use Kip Generate. Okay. So let's say you're not using Kip Generate and all you're using is chat Kip and uh, like highlight Kip and inline Kip where it's generating content right in here. A million mm -hmm. tokens can get you about 750,000 words generated every month, give or take. 750,000. Yeah, give or take. Wow. Now, when it comes to the tools, the yeah. tools, there's a lot happening. So it's, 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 it costs a little bit more. So on average, so it uses more tokens on the back end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause there's so much happening. There's a lot of processing happening. Um, and there's a lot of things that we're, we're, we're doing that you, that cost more tokens essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And so right now we don't have an estimated token usage, but we're releasing it soon right now. We're just collecting data to see, mm -hmm. and then we're going to have like a very good estimate. So when you hit generate, it's be like, Hey, you're going to use 50,000 tokens to generate yeah, this. For example. Yeah. Yeah. And then you and can then you're either... more aware. Should I do this or not? Should I? Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Should I refine? Right. Maybe I'll go less chapters because now it's not going to generate Yeah. that. Like you get what I mean? So you can refine uh, your input. Uh, for example, uh, now outline, Outline, description, and summarizer can be really high, even research actually, just because it's processing so much data. Like for example, description, if you pass in a 60,000 word book, yeah. we have to consume all those words. That is the yeah. only way that we can give you a high quality description. description. By the way, I don't think I don't think I showed you one, but uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, no, you didn't show it yet. No, we forgot it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, But it's take so for this one, I actually passed in the outline uh, just for fun. Okay. I, yeah. 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 So you could do that if you want. But uh, if you really wanted to grasp the entire content, you should definitely do your book. Um, but again, so for description, I think I think the limit is sixty thousand words. I I'll have to double check with my team. That might, actually might be summarizer, to be honest. But regardless, it's pretty high, and what happens is it has to consume all those words. Right. And that's a lot yeah. of tokens. Yeah. So it can get costly depending on how you're using it. And yeah, we'll, we'll have average specific use. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, in the beginning, you have to be a little bit um, careful to not burn all your tokens, 1 million tokens. But in yeah. a few weeks, we will know a little bit more about how much everything is. Exactly. Use. Exactly. You can do your own calculations. Yeah. Nice. I, I, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, that is yeah, I got, hopefully it's pretty clear. Um, yeah. I got some but, a little question from Robbie. Is it the same engine of chat GPT four? So GPT four, um, we don't have an option for you to enable Kip through GPT, uh, four level output. Not yet. Um, the option is available. We're just not. Mm -hmm. So for example, let me see. You're not using I, it yet. Yeah. I might have it actually. Yeah, I do because I'm an admin. So we have standard KIP, which is based on, it's similar to chat GPT. So what you would go chat GPT 3.5, that yeah. you can expect uh, similar results. Then ultra, if I enable ultra, uh, mm -hmm. you'll see it's a little bit slower. Hey, KIP. See how it types a little bit slower. If I go back, uh, you'll see that the output's yeah. faster. So this is using uh, GPT-4. Now, for most of the things that we're doing, 
GPT-4 is actually overkill unless okay. you're generating the final output. For example, we do that for description. Okay. It's a final output. Yeah, but otherwise, four. Yeah. exactly. Because four consumes way more tokens mm. than our standard. And Two so, five. yeah, exactly. And so things like research, um, outline, uh, summarizer, I'm not sure. Description, I know we, 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 because it's something that you're going to go and use right away. We definitely, uh, we use uh, the ultra version of Kip, but otherwise it's, it's overkill in terms of these other tools. Now, when it comes yeah. to the tools that we add in the future, uh, we will, but uh, soon customers will have access to the ultra version of Kip and you are free to use the GPT-4 version just We'll let you know how much extra token usage it is, but it is dramatically different. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, dramatically cool. different. Yeah, did that answer your question, Robin? I guess so. Maybe we'll see. But for now, yeah, guys, you can go uh, directly to dibly.com, I think, or if you want, you can also buy through my affiliate link, dibly.com. Create. I shared it in the chat with my name, Affiliate Juan. Um, and then I put in some extra bonuses. So if you buy through my link and then send me the proof that you bought through my link, you will get uh, a bookie can secrets for publishers for free. You will get, um, I had a special, I think one hour long video, which only recorded for my VA at the time, which I paid $250 for. You get that as a bonus. It's, um, about how to create best-selling book titles, the title and the subtitle. It's really a valuable video. Um, I, in that video, you see all these bestsellers. You will see my bestsellers. You see everything. Everything is fulfilled there. You will get that totally for free just for signing up at least one month. Uh, I'm paying the subscription one month for Dibbly uh, Create. And for all the people who are live in the call and will buy within 48 hours, I throw a third bonus in as well, and that's a free coaching call with me for one hour worth $250. So I think I'm giving away wow. too much, but <laughs> it's worth that's it amazing. because I really love this tool and I really want to that you guys are going to improve your business and the quality of your books and uh, we're going to use Dibly Create for the long term. So I hope this helps to get you guys over the, let's say, over the fence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing, yeah. that's, that's yeah, that's amazing bonuses, wow. Yeah, so you can go to the chat, there you see the link. Um, if you buy through my link, you will get those bonuses if you buy it within the next 48 hours, if you join this call, even if you're gone now, but uh, huh, you later see this recording, you can still use my link. Robbie, the affiliate link is in the chat. So where you're chatting, you just saw it. Did you get it? Did you see it, Robbie? I repasted it. I see. Yes, cool. So everyone, hurry up before it's too late. Go grab it <laughs> before I I uh, regret my bonuses and my one-hour coaching call. So uh, amazing. Amazing, yeah, but yeah, I really want to thank you uh, for this really cool demo. I, uh, I'm i a little bit Absolutely. overwhelmed. Some things I have to re-watch again because there was a lot of information if you see it for the first time, yeah. but I really see the potential in all the things and I'm sure if you're going to use it a few hours, yeah, our, our process will really uh, speed up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And and this is this is what we did. Like the entire time we were building this is we kept, you know, the self-publishers, the digital publishers in mind. Yeah. How do we make your life easier? And yeah. Every yeah, tool we totally built that. that. Yeah. 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 And you I felt it the first minute I saw it, I thought, well, wow. This is made for us. This is made for me. Yes. I want to have yes. it. Yeah. So yeah. Amazing. Like I shared with you, Marco, I'm going to publish my own book. I'm going to write it with this book and try to, I'm going to 
use every feature you implement, every feature feature. Yeah, I'm going to use and see, and then we'll give you feedback, how it works, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, yeah, really cool. I look forward to that. And we're always open to feedback uh, because that's how we make this even better to make your life yeah. even better. Yeah. So absolutely. Nice. Yeah. And do we have some kind of support uh, system? Yeah. In the so back? if you go, uh, I think there's two ways to go to support. So you go help center here and you can report a bug or you can contact support directly. Cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you run into issues, if you report a bug, this goes straight to our dev team and they'll they'll look at it and if it's like super urgent they'll jump right in and, and fix whatever problem you have um yeah. one thing i want to mention is you can use this offline uh so it's always being oh, yeah. backed up yeah uh you don't have to worry as soon as you connect to the internet it'll push everything back up to the servers we're making backups regularly there's this clock sign right here mm -hmm. uh, we're going to launch an interface where if you can go back in time historically and if wow. whatever, if you the if something went versions. wrong, exactly yeah. right from when you started writing, because uh, we we're doing backups, like I think every thirty seconds after you stop typing, because we don't want anybody to lose any data. That is very important no. for us. Um, yeah. So your 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 data is secured, and we do not use anything to train Kip, so you never have to worry about that at all well uh, yeah. we don't use your information we don't use content that you work on nothing now if you're using nothing. kip to generate of course that comes from kip so you know that's there but anything yeah. you write anything else um it's just kip, uh privacy, privacy, privacy yeah so you don't have to worry about any of that absolutely cool. um yeah and maybe one last thing i want to mention yeah yeah sorry yeah. if you ahead. don't mind juan is we've given the ability for people to disable kip so let's say yeah. you're working on a project and for this project, you want nobody to use AI. Then if you disable KIP, you see that there's no way to access KIP anymore. It's gone. Um, so we give you that freedom as well. Um, yeah. And maybe nice to add that, that if people are going to chat GPT and copy paste it in right. this tool, yes. maybe yes. you can explain that as well. Yeah. So, uh, I think it went live today with this new update of this KIP interface that I was like all surprised about. So uh, what we did now is there's a lot of concerns, especially with TUW with like freelancers using AI and stuff like that. And we have a down packed system where we know we can recognize and we've built a pattern recognition system where we have a team dedicated to reviewing content when there is an AI claim. And uh, what we're doing now is further improving that by if someone comes and pastes content in Create, we're capturing that. So we can go back and be like, okay, this person wow. pasted this content. Yeah. Let's have a look. Was it AI generated? So we can see yeah. what they're typing versus what they're pasting. What they're uh, pasting. And there's actually, we found a way where if they're pasting from ChatGPT specifically, mm -hmm. we actually... We, we found a way to almost be 100% with, yeah, wow. there's something that chat GPT renders. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So we're, we're making sure that we're helping the, you know, whoever is the owner of the content that your content, if you don't want AI and you want to be hundred percent certain, we're doing everything we can uh, to add to that Juan actually um, because if you use Kip, we're going to be able to tell you what Kip generated or not with a hundred percent certainty. We can even yeah. go as far as, so let's say Kip, so Kip, sorry, Kip generated this. Uh, let's say I go in and I just reword this. We're going to be able to show, okay, Kip generated all this, but a human came in and replaced this. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be able to be that specific. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And maybe I come up with another idea, but uh, maybe it's for the future list. I will say it all later after the call. I have another idea, but let's <laughs> save it for after the call. Yeah. I Sounds got good. One, one question from Robbie. I think I know the answer, but I will, I will let you answer. Does the system use a database until 2021 as JetGPT, or is it working on updated contents? I uh, let uh, you answer that question. Yeah, great question. So 
Uh, we're using the similar system as ChatGPT right now. Uh, but what we, what we are working on is actually training our own AI models uh, that we expect to go live uh, in 2024. Early 2024, you'll start seeing it come into Create. And with those, uh, we'll be able to train it ourselves uh, to be more relevant with existing um, information, existing content on the internet, as well as we'll allow it to be really, really good at very specific things. Something where like a generic model like ChatGPT, it's meant to be able to do everything. Whereas we can create custom models that are very good at specific stuff. So that's coming uh, next year. But right now it is similar to ChatGPT. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to say the same, but I thought let's let's uh, explain. Let's explain by you. So uh, yeah, cool, awesome. Um, so if everyone, yeah, so next year it will use its own AI um, models uh, created by Marco's team. But so you can wait until next year or. If you buy it on time, you lock in the price for a lifetime for $23. So if you're on the fence, um, I think when people sign up, is it um, do you have to pay directly or do they have one day for free or how does it work? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We do have a seven-day free trial. Yeah. So you seven-day free trial. So yeah, they have nothing to lose because they don't. Yeah. They can use seven days with Kip and everything yeah. and yeah. all the functionality. Yes. And then they can cancel it on time to a normal. Exactly. Yeah. 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 When will the promotion expire? Do you mean my, my promotion, Robbie, or uh, Marco's promotion? Because Marco's promotion depends on when the new functionality goes live, $23. Mm -hmm. um, so probably beginning October, I guess, right? Could be as early, uh, like you're, you're well aware, yeah. Uh, yeah. Juan, things yeah. can get delayed, uh, yeah. but there's a few a few things that we want to hash out before we do that. So this is uh, the early access price. Yeah. Yeah, early access price. And if you're on the, yeah, my bonuses only apply when you buy within 48 hours since our call. So let's say um, eight o'clock, today's Thursday, Eight o'clock Saturday evening. If you don't buy it before that, then my bonuses will expire. But you can still buy it for twenty three dollars. Yeah, until the price goes up. Yeah, probably has a laugh, but uh, that's how it works in the internet marketing world. Huh? <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, are there any other questions, guys? Do you want to know more? Who already bought it? I see a lot of yeses, yes, yes, yes. Thank you for the compliments, Robbie. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I uh, all the compliments to Marco for creating this amazing tool, giving an uh, amazing presentation and live Thank demo you. because I know from my time back in IT, live demos are always very exciting. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, because super. when you test, when you test, everything works, but when you do it live, Things tend not to work, right? It's like, oh, this is working two seconds it's ago. It's working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that is so, so true. Yep. So true. But this one was really seamless. Everything worked perfectly fast. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we've been we've been developing this for over a year now. And uh, yeah, very, very excited for this. And there's so much to come that I'm like extremely excited for. So I can't wait to share it and and have it go live. Oh, I think I cut out. I don't know if it's myself or Juan. I think it was Juan.
I guess while we wait for Juan, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, Robbie, what do you mean by promote, like let other people know, uh, if that's the case, absolutely. It's, it's completely available to everyone. Um, but yeah, just let me know if that's what you mean by promote. Oh, as an affiliate. Yes. So we do have, uh, an affiliate program. Um, it's not, it's not available for sign up yet. Uh, but it will be soon. Just keep an eye out on the dibley.com site. Um, we're going to be adding a, just like how you can apply for the Urban Writers Affiliate Program, you'll be able to do similar uh, and apply for um, for Dibley Affiliate Program. Well, Dibley Create. And if you're already uh, Urban Writers Affiliate, then you get, you already have access to the program. Nice, nice, nice. I'm back. Sorry, I lost my internet again. Something, okay. <laughs> but uh, I, th okay. I see you guys managed. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. I wasn't sure if it was you or me because you froze, but I'm like, oh, I wasn't sure if it was mine. And then I <laughs> yeah. saw that you dropped out completely. Yeah, so. yeah. And I dropped out. <laughs> it was me. Yeah, it was me. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I think we, um, I think the most important things are shared. I think they're not anymore question so again thank you very much marco thank you very much everyone for showing up i really appreciate it and that's why i uh, yeah throw in those amazing bonuses as well because i really appreciate you guys uh, taking time out of your day busy day you have a lot of things but you made time for this uh, call and you as well marco and um, yeah. i would say keep me up to date every new feature i'm happy happy to share with everyone Amazing. I will. And thank you, Juan. I really, really appreciate this. Uh, it's been fun. And uh, really yeah, fun. We'll, yeah. Yeah. It has. It has. So amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, guys. See you soon. Talk to you Bye, soon. Everyone. Bye. See you.